So in China, the last couple of years, we were lacking um, some things. Sometimes we were lacking electricity, sometimes microchips, and especially last year, we were lacking flights. So I'm very happy that tonight, Chen Tian from uh, the chief representative of Lufthansa Group Airlines here in China is with us and that you elaborate a little bit on what actually happened over the last three years with the aviation industry, but even more uh, important, what will happen in the future. So thank you very much for coming tonight. Thank you, Max. It's my pleasure to be here tonight. So uh, zero COVID um, policy is over. The borders are open. Uh, while there were a very, very tough time for the aviation and airline industry, mm. uh, I have the feeling that we are still not 100% back on track. What's actually the current status? Mm, you're right. So actually COVID um, has been a very difficult time for all of us, especially of course for those in the airline industry. And so currently, actually, if we look at worldwide um, flight recovery situation, we are almost um, already at 88% of this year, as predicted by uh, YATA, which is the International Aviation Transport As Association. Uh, on the other side, they also uh, expect that this year there will be almost 4.3 billion people traveling again, which is almost close to the 2019 level of 4.5 billion. Um, however, uh, in China, the situation is a bit different. As you know, um, China has removed most COVID restrictions only beginning of this year. Mm. Um, so currently, when we look domestic, the air travel has already exceeded pre-pandemic level. However, on the international fields, the recovery level is still limit, very limited. So I think this is why you still feel that not all the flights are back yet. Um, so Lufthansa Group Airlines is actually the first to resume um, international flights between China and Europe. Currently, we're providing 36 flights um, from our three main gateways in China, uh, namely Beijing, Shanghai, and Hong Kong, to the four hubs of Lufthansa Group in Frankfurt, Munich, Turin, and Vienna uh, in summer scheduled 2023. Uh, and uh, so passengers actually have a very good choice. Uh, besides, uh, they can not only travel to Germany, to Switzerland, to Austria, but can also travel to worldwide 310 destinations with our very strong Lufthansa Group network. Uh, and very soon in July, we will resume Beijing Munich flights three times weekly, as well as we will also increase the Shanghai Munich flights to daily operation end of August. Until then, we will almost operate 40 flights uh, more than 40 weekly flights, which is almost 50% compared to pre-pandemic level. And um, maybe not all the flights uh, are <coughs> back, but the prices still remain quite high for <coughs> the um, airfares and the, and the air tickets. What are actually the um, drivers of this? And can we expect that the prices go down in the near future? Yes, so I think the ticket price actually, uh, there are different factors. First is 2019, so the <clears throat> benchmark year, which uh, was before pandemic. So that year, there is a lot of overcapacity in the market. Mm -hmm. And this leads, of course, also to um, price competition. And however, so the global aviation industry, the net profit margin this year is predicted only to be 1.2%. Mm -hmm. So I think further price competition will not um, help this industry to sustainable uh, growing in the long run. Mm. The second factor is, as I said before, uh, still the air travel is not 100% uh, back to normal level. However, the demands and uh, people, the desire to travel is increasing. And this, of course, also leads to an offer and demand situation mm. and higher prices. And uh, last but not least, I think there's, there's also cost factors which uh, is driving up the prices. And one of the cost factors is, of course, the aviation and jet fuel prices. Mm -hmm. So last year in 2022, because of a lot of economic downturns and because of um, frequent geopolitical tensions, as well as the cuts of OPEC um, oil um, production and the oil price, uh, went up uh, almost 40% compared to 2019 level. Mm. 
Um, however, on the China-European routes, so I think our customers see a very high price last year. Um, but this year, actually, with the opening and of the country as well as increased capacity, the price has already went down. And so from January to May this year, the price already went down 50% compared to last year. Mm. And I believe with more capacity coming back, uh, I assume the price will continue to come down this year. When will this happen? Mm. Why is the capacity not 100% uh, as pre-pandemic level? Okay, so to answer this question, so I need to divide again to what situation and also the Chinese situation. So on what wise, I think the connectivity, and um, although it's almost um, coming back to 90% uh, of pre-pandemic level, however, so we still see a lot of limiting factors, uh, such as the delay of the new aircraft delivery, and as mm. well as the shortage of personnel. Mm. So I think it's very essential that now uh, we restore the supply chain as soon as possible, as well as also to attract young talents to the aviation industry. Mm -hmm. On the other side, I think uh, for the international uh, capacity, air capacity for Chinese markets, uh, so the limiting factors are different. So here the limiting factors are really the bilateral flight rights negotiations. Um, also, uh, for example, uh, the visa situations. Uh, and this kind of factors, of course, also uh, influence the Chinese airlines and also foreign airlines to increase uh, the capacity between China and worldwide destinations. I, I think um, you mentioned mm -hmm. that those are one of the hot topics currently, obtaining visa as a German company for Chinese staff but also for um, clients, et cetera, which is quite difficult at the moment to get appointments on, on short notice and we have to wait uh, three months. The business is impacted, tourism, trade fair, et cetera. How is your business impacted? I think that that could be quite serious for you. Yeah, so I think Visa um, currently it has very long waiting time for application. So uh, this for sure negatively impacts our businesses. Uh, so I hope this problem can be solved um, very soon. Mm -hmm. On the other side, actually, I also noticed that um, so recently uh, the visa service provider VFS released a um, um, press release and says uh, Germany is also one of the top destinations for Chinese to apply for visa. So in other words, I think uh, currently the demand for German visa is very high. Yes, and uh, the capacities um, mm -hmm. in the consulates and in the embassies still not um, on the level um, as, as uh, pre-pandemic. Nevertheless, I can remember in 2020 when the pandemic was going on <coughs> and everyone uh, uh, found out that video calls are, are very good and everyone said the uh, airline industry will never be as before because people will travel much less um, and they only will, will meet via Zoom or MS Teams, etc. Is that true? Do you, do you think that people will travel less in the future because of the digitalization of communication? Yeah, so I think um, it really depends on, first of all, I think it's a human nature to see each other in person. So I don't think this can be 100% uh, replaced by the uh, digitalization and also technology. And however, on the other side, uh, what we of course also observe uh, now is the uh, travel behavior of the customers are changing. For example, a lot of um, people are booking on short notice because mm -hmm. they don't know what kind of uncertainty um, factors or situation will come up compared to pre-pandemic time. As well as we also observe people who are combining leisure travel with business travel together, oh, okay. which mm -hmm. make the stay in certain destinations longer than before pandemic. Mm. Okay, um, get it then. I mean, as, as Lufthansa takes it very serious, not only to bring people from A to B, but connecting people, I, I think it's still a valid point um, for, for your com company. Uh, nevertheless, um, thinking about if you go from Shanghai to Beijing, for example, you can choose, right? Will you take the high-speed train, takes four hours, or will you take the plane, which mm -hmm. will take one and a half hours, including check-in, which takes longer time. Do you see any changes that new technologies basically come into the market which could be a competi competition for uh, the classical or the typical um, airline business? 
Uh, yes, I think um, between Shanghai and Beijing, sometimes I myself also prefer to take a high-speed train. Mm. And so Lufthansa is also um, very intensively cooperating with uh, German railways, with Swiss railways and Austrian railways on intermodality. Mm. Uh, because here there's another keyword, which is sustainability. And to reduce the carbon um, emission in the air, so we also cooperate with the uh, railway uh, transportation modes uh, for very short uh, distance transportation. Yeah. However, on the other side, I think for the uh, long haul travel, for the international long haul travel, so the current technology um, under the uh, current technology, I think uh, still it seems the commercial aviation or commercial air travel uh, is the most efficient and also uh, viable transportation option. And I mean, there are still huge investments into innovation in the mm -hmm. um, airline business. I mean, of course, we will talk about this later to reduce the, um, the carbon emission, but also um, there are investments in drones for mm -hmm. uh, intercity. What do you think where the um, aviation industry will develop? Where, where will be the disruptive innovations in the future? Mm, I think, uh, first of all, maybe let's start with the railway um, technology. So first of all, I don't think I'm a rail expert. And however, currently, really, the uh, fastest uh, commercial scheduled train on steel rails uh, is the Chinese high-speed uh, high railway mm. connections uh, in China, which runs at a speed of 350 kilometers per hour. Um, so technically, this train can still run a bit faster. However, it's kept out because of economic uh, situation and also commercial consideration, because probably it will um, have a much higher cost, uh, much increased maintenance, and also leads to much higher uh, ticket prices. Mm -hmm. And on the other side, however, um, so we also observe, uh, for example, there are new technologies coming in. And uh, for example, you mentioned electric aircraft uh, mm. as well as unmanned aircraft. So these are all the new developments in the airline industry. And uh, so the current state of the art technology doesn't support this and to operate commercially for long haul, long distance mm -hmm. air travel. But who knows, in 20 years or in 50 years. Mm. So I believe the technology disruption will come one day. It's only a matter of time. By the way, also, uh, maybe one day the commercial space travel will also become a reality. Well, let's, let's see uh, how long this will take. And traditionally, uh, European country, um, a European company as well as the American company, they are quite leading in, in the aircraft um, business. So what kind of role China will play in the future when it comes to innovation in the um, aviation industry? Will it have an impact? Uh, I think definitely yes, um, because first of all, China is a very big aviation market. Uh, before the pandemic, China is number two um, worldwide aviation market, mm. and it was predicted that China will eventually become the number one aviation market. Mm. On the other side, China is also a very innovative market, and a lot of innovation also come from here. Uh, so recently, for example, I also observed that uh, the narrow body passenger jets manufactured by uh, Comac mm -hmm. and the C919 also made its first commercial maiden flight. So I think eventually, with the time, the Chinese aviation will also play a role mm -hmm. in the global technology landscape. Okay, and um, this will be quite important also in the field that the airline business was blamed for global warming, uh, et cetera, in the past, right? It was considered as, as quite harmful for the uh, environment. So what does um, Lufthansa especially do um, to um, reduce carbon emission and to also serve the companies who need to become um, more carbon neutral um, to, to reach these goals? Mm. So I think, first of all, sustainability is really a key word for the current generation of airline professionals. And I think until we reach carbon neutrality in the aviation industry, there are a lot of to do. And it's a mission, but it's a mission possible, but only with joint efforts. Mm -hmm. And second, I want to say is, in fact, the global aviation industry contributed 2.8% of the global carbon emission, mm -hmm. which is much lower than most people have assumed. Mm -hmm. However, for Lufthansa Group, uh, sustainability is really a key strategy for us, and we are also the worldwide leader in this area. Um, so for example, in 2011, 
uh, Lufthansa is already the first airline to use um, SAF, which is sustainable aviation fuel, in its regular flight operations. And now uh, Lufthansa has brought this sustainability to a new level, which we said we want to be in 2050, reach uh, carbon neutrality. Oh. And what do we do and to reach this target? And so basically, first point is uh, we are modernizing our aircraft. Uh, so starting from now, actually, we are expecting every 10 days a new aircraft, also including the state-of-the-art long-haul aircraft types from both Airbus and Boeing, mm -hmm. because they are more um, fuel efficiency in operation. Yeah. Okay. And the second, we are also uh, doing a lot of things to increase the operational efficiency. A recent example is we have developed a new material uh, together by Lufthansa Technik and BASF, and the new material is called AeroShack. Mm -hmm. And this can also improve um, the uh, operational efficiency of the aircraft. And, and last but not least, so sustainable aviation fuel is still the most promising way actually to reach the carbon and neutrality in the long run. And so as I mentioned, Lufthansa has already uh, started to use SAF since 2011. Uh, and currently Lufthansa is the number two uh, worldwide SAF customers and also number one in Europe. Uh, however, um, currently the global SAF production only can meet 0.1% mm. of the demand of the aviation jet. So that means in this area, we still need to do a lot of joint efforts and innovation to develop and also produce uh, much more sustainable aviation fuel. Mm. Lufthansa is, for example, in 2021, became a partner and also a customer of the first world power to liquid aviation and ASA, uh, sustainable aviation fuel plant. And in 2022, our subsidiary Swiss uh, International Airlines also invested in a company which is called Singhelio. And Swiss International Airlines will also be the world's first airline to fly solo kerosene. So that means actually this power to liquid and also sun to liquid technology uh, is a carbon neutral sustainable aviation fuel, which is different from today's popular biogenic sustainable aviation fuel. So this will even further improve uh, the sustainability of airline industry in the long run. I, I think this uh, strategy will really lead to a competitive um, advantage. So today you spoke as chief rep of um, Lufthansa uh, Group Airlines, but you're also our board member and you are quite engaged in our chamber. So why is Lufthansa engaged in our chamber, but also why are you personally so involved? Yeah, so I think to be to give a very short answer, so together I think we are stronger. And also Lufthansa is a member of German Chamber in a lot of markets worldwide. Uh, so I think German Chamber provides a very good platform for German companies here in China. At the same time, it's also a good platform for Chinese companies to know about German industry and also German businesses. Uh, and also German Chamber is very actively advocating uh, a lot of policies with the Chinese government on behalf of the German companies and also in their interest. And this is especially important uh, for those small and medium enterprises because otherwise their voices are hardly heard. Mm. And last but not least, of course, um, in the German Chamber, a lot of members are also Lufthansa Group customers. So here I also learn firsthand our customer needs as well as customer feedback. Sometimes, of course, also includes customer complaints. Mm. However, these are also all our opportunities to improve ourselves and also react faster to the market's changing environment. Okay, it was a very, very great um, talk with you tonight. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Max, as well.